Hey there guys and girls, welcome back to a new Photoshop tutorial. And today I want to show you how to create a portrait effect or a poster design, depending on how you look at it. I will show you how to transform uh, an image like this into something like this. Uh, we'll work with blend modes and lots of layer masks and clipping masks and we'll create this uh, sort of effect. So I hope you will like it and let's get started. Okay, to start, uh, you will find all the resources on the resources folder that you can download uh, from the website. So uh, all the files uh, are inside the stock folder. And uh, we will start working with uh, this portrait. You can see the layers palette here. We have quite a few layers, but um, we're not gonna uh, make very complex selections and stuff like that. We're just gonna put layers on top of uh, each other and you can see here we have a lot of layer masks and we're gonna play with blend modes and some uh, abstract shapes and light effects to create this uh, to create this effect so as I said we will start with our um, model which is this I have it as a smart object um, I cropped it the full image let me show you the stock folder uh, this is the full image I just cropped part of it and I opened it in Photoshop and in order to um, delete the background I used the calculations. If you don't want to remove the background, that's fine because as you can see here, the background is pretty much the same color. So you can leave it as it is if you want, but I wanted to do it because um, that way it would it's easier to clip layers to this and just keep the shape and not having to go with the brush. So I think it's worth spending a bit of time um, masking the, the model uh, Delete the background, and uh, then you'll have um, you'll have it easier when I have to clip the mask. So this is how I did it. I uh, opened this in Photoshop. Well, let's actually copy it again to another document and close this. Not save. And okay, so this is my image. So once you crop the image, like I have here, what you do is go to Image and choose Calculations. Now here, what we do with the Calculations panel is merge channels. You can see we have source 1, source 2, and then we have the blend. So what we do have for source 1, we have a channel. On the source 2, we can choose another channel and blend these two channels and get a contrasty image which we can mask and that way we can um, remove the background easily. We have uh, a bit of luck here. The model has a dark hair and the uh, background is a bit brighter which makes it easier to mask. So what I will do is on source 1, I'll leave the red channel and on source 2 I'll have the blue channel and I'll change the blend mode of this to subtract and you can see the result that we have so we are subtracting uh, the blue channel from the red channel and if we check the invert here you will see the result make sure to set an offset of 128 and a scale of 2 otherwise you will not get the same result so as you can see here we have a pretty good result we have the model white the hair is white as well and the background is dark so what I will do now is make sure I have the result on a new channel I'm not going to go into details about how this works uh, for this image these are the settings that work and all I wanted to uh, mention is that here you can blend channels and that's it we're not gonna go into details here because it's a bit more complex than uh, what you see here so let's click OK and if we go to the channels tab here on the layers palette you can see we have alpha 1 which is our new channel and what we can do now is we, uh, if you want you can go again to image calculations and this time use um, the red channel and alpha 1 and just multiply them uh, and try different uh, different channels here actually what would be a lot easier is just to use alpha 1 and alpha 1 and multiply it by itself and that way you can increase the contrast but this is too extreme so I'm not gonna do that what I did instead is I used levels. so with the alpha 1 select I press control command L to open the levels and just increase well m make the darks a bit darker and the whites a bit brighter and let's click OK and next what I did is I get I got the brush tool, set the blend mode of the brush to overlay, and make sure we have a flow and opacity of 100%. Switch the foreground color to white, 
and just paint over this like that. Let's make a smaller brush, uh, something like this. Notice that here on the edge, um, we just painted a little bit. That's because the background color is not pure black. So what you have to do is press Control Command L again and make sure the darks are darker. And you can see here, let me zoom in just a bit. See this mm, brighter shade? What you can do to uh, get rid of it is switch the foreground color to black and paint over it and not worry about the edge, the white edge, because we're painting with the overlay blend mode and it's not affecting it. Uh, it's just affecting dark if you um, dark areas. If you paint here with black, you will see you'll make it darker. So instead we have to paint with white and not carry too uh, not care too much about the the background. The inner areas here are very easy to paint. We're, we're gonna take care of that after that. But what we want to keep here is the hair. Uh, so paint with black, maybe not with pure black, with just something darker. Like that but first let's paint with white so we want to make the hair a bit brighter like that I'm just uh, want to take care of the edges not the inner side and then switch back to black and paint again you will lose some of the details here so don't don't worry about that too much you're gonna lose some of the details anyways and on top of that I'm doing it really quick so uh, once you have the edges isolated, which is what we really care uh, about, switch the blend mode of the brush to normal and probably use a hard brush and maybe also decrease the spacing, that's yeah, okay. And just paint with white to mask everything here, um, like so. And here as well. Paint everything with white. Just make sure you go over all the details. I'm doing it really quick just for the demonstration here because I will use the already extracted model that I have on my original artwork. But I just want to show you how I did this. So something like that. Paint the ear here as well, the hair and everything. We're done. And let's uh, assume we're done. Uh, I made it really quick and not. I didn't took care of all the details, but anyways. So uh, once you're done here, uh, we have the model separated from the background. Just control click this alpha channel to load the selection. Go to the RGB channel, go back to the layers and create your layer mask. And here you have it, you deleted the background. And if you actually change this to, or we add a solid color, you can see how we subtracted this and the background is gone. If you want to use the refined edge, go ahead. If the edges are too sharp or something like that, just go ahead and do it. Another way of um, of working with this is, uh, let's actually leave this uh, color for the background and use another tone like this. If you want to keep every single detail on the hair, what you can do is after you create this layer mask, just duplicate the layer and delete this layer mask. Delete, you will see that the original background comes, uh, well, shows up and change the blend mode of this to multiply. And you can see that now we have every single detail of the hair before and after, see that? And we also have the details back here on the on the ear and some and well every detail is back on the image. And now you can uh, safely uh, create clipping masks here. If I create a new layer and clip it, and let's paint with red, I can safely uh, clip masks to this without having to use masks on the on these uh, clipped layers. Okay, so that's how I isolated the model. So what I will do is go to my document here and open my model and this is the layer that I will use for this tutorial. Okay, what I have to do now is change the canvas size. So the canvas that I used for this artwork is 3000 pixels by 4000. Click OK and that's it. Let's remove our background layer and let, let's start making our own background. I use the a, a gradient for that. So create a gradient fill adjustment layer. And the colors that I used are 
um, give you the color code is the first color is E1 DCD6 like that and the second one is ECE 9E6 and change the style to radio and I'll have to invert it because uh, I want the and the bright part to be you know, on the center, click OK, zoom out and if you want to move the gradient you have to open this gradient fill here to be able to move this around and I'll leave it right there and click OK. So we have our background but I have to drag it under my model here. And now I want to add some grain on this uh, gradient fill. In order to do that I'll turn it into a smart object you can also rasterize it if you want, but I don't want to rasterize it. And here you can use the noise filter. So just add noise and just add a couple of pixels. What I did, I think I used the camera raw filter, but if you don't have Photoshop CC and you don't have camera raw, you can add three or four pixels, um, uh, three or four percent of noise and then uh, blur it or something like that. What I did is I went to the FX here and I'll zoom into 100%. Whenever you add noise or sharpen your image, make sure you zoom it at 100%. And here I just added some grain. That's too much. Like that. And I'll leave the roughness to about 60. And the size was okay to 25. And just to have some grain here on the image. And I'll click OK. This will also help prevent some of the bending here that we get because the transition was way too smooth and you can see those um, circles here that's called bending and I'll probably sharpen this noise a bit so I'll go to sharpen smart sharpen right here and let's say 0 0.5 I'll set the shadows highlights everything to 0 because I want to make sure I sharpen both the, the shadows and the highlights and about 110% at 0 0.5 and noise reduction set to zero, of course. 0 0.3 at 103%. Okay, click OK. And that's it. Uh, maybe I added too much noise. And well, since this is a smart object, the, the grain that I added with the camera raw is now a smart filter. So if I double click this small icon here, I can um, reduce the opacity to, let's say, 80%. It was a bit too too much noise. Also, I could double click on and reduce the amount of noise from the filter itself. Great, now we have our base, our basic canvas. Let's move the model a bit higher up here. And now that I have the model and the mask, I could rasterize it, but I think I'll turn it into a smart object as well. And that's because I wanna add a hue saturation adjustment but I don't want to add it as a, an adjustment layer so I want to add it from the menu so I'll go to image adjustments and choose hue saturation and I'll drop the saturation to minus 65 and what you do um, what happens is now if I click OK you can see this is turned into a smart filter so the adjustment was turned into like a let's call it a smart adjustment but it's actually a smart filter Okay, so that's why I wanted to turn this into a smart object because now I can add adjustments to the model without affecting uh, other layers that I will put on top. Uh, you'll see it. Great, now another thing that I want to do is create another layer mask for this smart object. And uh, I'll get the brush tool and I'll use a hard brush, opacity and flow at 100%, the normal blend mode for the brush. I'll increase the size of it and I'll start like cutting pieces of the image like that but uh, make sure I don't have the pen pressure on and make sure I have I'm painting with pure black so just a couple of clicks here and there like that and now I'll make it smaller and I'll switch the foreground color to white and paint back some of them some of this uh, just to recover some of that with the X key you can I just want to have some weird shapes here I don't want to have a straight line okay like that and uh, we're done 
And now we have to start adding um, layers here. Let's go to our stock folder, which is here, and we'll start working with this image. So I'll open it in Photoshop. Actually, I'm gonna draw, drag it on over my image here. It adds it as a smart object, which is okay. And I'll right click and clip it, create clipping mask to the model. And you can see how it covers it. I don't know if maybe I'll leave it. You can see it's 5% of the original size because this image is huge. Uh, it's from unsplash.com. They have really great images and you can use them for your commercial projects as well. I'll leave it probably here. I just want to have this sort of a cityscape right here. I want this tower to be visible there. And now I'll create the layer mask for this. The good thing about using uh, dragging the image over the canvas is that it keeps the original name for the layer. It gives the name of the of the file of the photo. So I'll create this layer mask. Grab the gradient tool. Make sure I have black to trans well, black to white. And I'll create, uh, let's change the, the style to linear and create a linear gradient. Let's invert it because I want to mask the top part like that. Maybe a smoother gradient like so and maybe drag it a bit lower like that. Next, I'm going to open another image. So I'm going to go back to my stock folder here. And I'm going to search for another image, which is this one. And I'm going to dra drag it over my canvas right here. Press enter and again, clip it. So right click and choose create clipping mask. I'm going to flip it horizontally. And of course, I'm going to make it smaller. Um, let's say about, well, just make it smaller like that. I'm going to place it right there on the left side. Something like that. And I create a layer mask for this. And this time I will use the brush tool and a soft brush. And I'm going to paint with black to mask that side and move it a bit more towards the left. So we cover this part. Maybe I'm going to make it a bit bigger like so and move it like that right there and I think I masked too much I want to see some of that water there and mask this part over the face if you want softer transitions you can use bigger brushes or just drop the opacity and the flow of the brush to like 50% and make multiple passes okay and I'll change the blend mode of this layer to screen and it looks nice. The reason why I changed it to screen is because I want to see on the darker areas of the of the photo, we can see through it. So if I set it back to normal, you can see this dark side here. If I change this to screen, you will see that the white areas will still be visible, but the dark sides create a blend effect, which allows you to see through the image, but you can still see the texture of this forest and the trees there. So take a look, screen, you can still see um, the trees, but you will, you will be able to see the white areas through it. And uh, it's sort of a nice effect. So see here on this, um, road here, you can see that looks like we have trees growing here because this dark areas will not be visible. Instead, we will see the bright areas from the image that is on top and looks like we have a, created a forest here around this um, road, which is nice. And now I'll duplicate this layer with Control Command J. Again, I'll clip it back and I'll change the, I'll leave the blend mode back to normal and I'll drop the opacity to 40%. The reason why I did this is because I wanted to see uh, more of the original image here and some of that color on the water, which I think was nice. And probably select both layers and move them higher up a bit. Okay, like that. And let's uh, move on. Go back to our folder, stock images, and let's use this image now. Drag it here on top of our image, clip it. First press enter, clip it to the model and 
Maybe let's flip it horizontally as well. And we'll make it smaller and put it right here. And we'll see how uh, we change the position. First, let's change the blend mode to soft light. And let's say, maybe move it a bit higher up. And it's a bit too dark. So what I will do is change the, the first photo that we added this one, I'll change the blend mode to screen because yeah, that, yeah, that looks a lot better. That way we can see some of the, you can see the clothing, you can see the shirt uh, and everything. So that will look, yeah, it looks a lot better. And we will put this right here, maybe make it bigger. Not that big. And just leave it there. It's a bit higher up right there and i'll create the layer mask for this as well get the brush tool this time i'll leave the opacity and flow to 100 percent and just start masking the edges like that and maybe with the 50 and 50 for the opacity and flow just remove some of the parts of the photo here over the face there like that Okay, now uh, let's add even more images. Again, let's go back to our stock folder. And this time I'll open the sunset image. And I'll drag it on top here, press enter and clip it. So as you can see, it's just a lot of clipping masks. I'll put it right there. And I'll leave the blend mode to normal. And I'm going to show you what I will do. I'll use, I'll create the layer mask, of course, opacity and flow of the brush to 100%. Get rid of the, of this part here. Like so, you can see I masked this with this really soft brush. But what I would like to do is have a sort of a stronger line here. So what I'll do is get the pen tool, make sure I have this option set to path. I'll select the layer mask of this last image that I added of this one. And I'll create a shape, a random shape like this. Like that. And now right click and choose create selection or make selection. Feather set to zero and click OK. And with this selection created, actually what I did is I, I have selected everything but the inner side. So I'll go to select inverse. So make sure you have this selection and not the background and now with the brush tool foreground color set to white zoom in a bit more and I'll use a smaller brush and I'll set the opacity and the flow to 30 percent and what I will do now is start painting with white just a couple of passes like that and what happens is that now I created the a really strong um, edge here. Let me hide the selection and you can see it. See that? If I, if I deselect, if I deselect this and I go back on history, you will see. See that? Uh, a strong edge there. Okay, so just to, I just want to have uh, that strong line there. Next, let's add another image, go back to our stock folder and let's open this other stock image and put it here on top. Enter, clipping mask and uh, make it smaller, of course. What I want from this image is just this part here of the sun. What I want to do is drop the opacity a bit because I want to make sure that sun is on top of the other one, of this one here. Like that. And I'll create the layer mask. And with the brush, I'll paint over it with black. And let's make sure I have the brush opacity and flow to 100%. See that? What you can do is create a duplicate um, 
of this layer and set it to screen. Now let's see how that looks and delete the layer mask or no, actually let's fill the layer mask with white to reveal the entire image. Or And now just paint over the areas that we don't want, like for example, this one here. And right here. Okay, and for the top one, I'll invert the layer mask and just paint back some of the trees here and with 30 and 30 opacity and flow, I'll blend this bottom part and get rid of the top. And let's see how we can move this around, but we have to select both images. Yep, right there. Maybe for this image of the sunset, I'll use the brush tool again and recover some of the colors because I blend it too much. Oops, let's paint with white. Yeah, I want some of that color back on the image. It looks nice. And probably with a smaller brush, get rid of that there. Oops, with white. Okay. The key here is not using really so small brushes. You can see what I did here is not what I like. So make sure you use big brushes and uh, have soft transition between the images. Uh, okay, that looks better. And that's pretty much it. Let's see. Yeah, this one here adds too much color on the man's face. I don't want that. That's okay. And now we have, uh, let's re-enable our background image. Uh, let's add another stock image here on the man's hair. I used this one. So you can drag this on top right here. And again, on top of everything, clip it. I unclipped the other masks. Okay, so put it there. I'll drag it right there and maybe flip it horizontally to see how that looks. Yeah, I want to have some more buildings and maybe make it smaller. Right there, maybe. And change the blend mode to, let's say, screen or soft light. Soft light will not look nice because the hair is black. Lighten or screen works. So let's leave it on screen. Drop the opacity to 80%. It was a bit too high. Create the layer mask. And with a soft brush, just mask edges that you don't like. And probably I'll unlink the layer mask and move the image around and see which one looks better, which part of the image looks better. And this one I think looks better. And make sure I have, I get rid of the edge right there. That's from another image, I see an edge. Yeah, right here. Okay. And I think we're done. What I would like to do though is add a bit of color on a color tone on the model. So what I will do is go to the model layer, select it, and add a gradient map between the model and all of these layers that I clipped to it. And I'll use one of the photographic toning gradients. Let's click OK and change to the list because I used one small list. I used the uh, sepia selen uh, selenium uh, 2, CPS Selenium 2, this one. And I'll leave the blend mode to normal, but I'll change the opacity to 60%. I just wanted to give this yellowish tone to the, to the model. And that's all the layers that I added here to, um, to the, over the, well, the model here. And then I added some other stuff on the background to make it look a bit more abstract, I use this paint uh, effect here, so just copy it. In the gradient fill, I'll name it to BG for background, and I'll paste it under my model and make it smaller with Control Command T. I'll leave it right there and change the blend mode to multiply because the background is white, so it will go away that, that way if you use the multiply blend mode. 
And then I also use some of my shapes. I created the uh, shapes pack. I created this sort of shapes here. Um, and I use this. So I'll give you uh, on the folder, you'll find these two images, but I'll give you the link. Uh, on the folder, you'll also find a, you'll find a text document with the links to download this pack if you want. And you can see there are multiple layers that make up this uh, effect here. So what I'll do is um, hide the background, control command A to select everything and I'll go to edit, copy, merge because I want to copy this uh, shape here without the background and paste it right there and make it smaller. And let's say, let's see where we can put this. Let's flip it horizontally. Yeah, it looks nice here. We have this uh, uh, sort of particles there. And then I'll paste it yet again. And I want to use this red right there. Yeah, it looks nice. I like how, how that looks. I like the shape, and the color of this. And probably move this uh, paint effect right there and maybe flip it vertically. See how that looks. Yeah, that looks better right there. The next thing that I added is also another particles effect uh, with this image. So let's drag it over our image right here. All of these images are under the model. You can see it's under the model and I'll change the blend mode to multiply to get rid of the background, but I'll have to open the levels and tweak this a bit like that and yeah I want to make it smaller I want to put this here on the hair let's zoom in a bit let's see if we can rotate it maybe it looks better yeah it doesn't look bad I'll leave it there and I don't know if I added anything else there um, on the image. Let's see the original. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Yeah, well, this second image that I added, I also added there on the background. It looks nice, this one. So I'll drag it here over my canvas. You can see it's under the model and let's say where I can put it. I'll make it smaller a bit right here okay and i'll change the blend mode to soft light and now i'll use the layer i'll create the layer mask and just get rid of of the edges and you can see the transition even though i'm using a soft brush the transition is too hard so what i will do is use a 50 percent flow and opacity for the brush and just start painting with a really big soft brush of course, I'm painting with black because I want the background to go away. And I'll have to move it higher up. And probably make make it bigger. Like so. And with the brush, I'll start revealing part of the image. And just, just make sure you don't have hard edges and that's that's it. Uh, that's that's pretty much it. I want to have that building there. I think it's the Empire State Building, if I'm if I'm not wrong. I want to have it visible, but not these damn hard edges on the bottom. Okay, I'll leave it like that. And that's that's it. All we need to do now is add some um, add some adjustment layers to this. So let's go ahead and make it look really nice now. In order to make the final um, adjustment, you have to make sure that you have everything as you want because now we're gonna uh, merge everything into a new layer. So I'll press Shift Alt Command E and uh, I'm gonna turn this into a smart object as well. And here, what I will do, the first thing that I will do, well, before we do that, uh, that's why I said you have to make sure that everything is okay. 
I'll create a new layer because I want to add some light effects here. I'll get the brush tool. On this new layer, which I'll name Glow, I'll set it to screen. And I'll start with a big brush like this. And let's see what color we have to use. I want to saturate this color, but not really too powerful. That looks nice, but it's a bit too bright. So I'll use a darker tone and maybe a bit more towards red. Like that. Now I'll make the brush smaller a bit. And I'll use a brighter tone here in the middle and then make it even brighter and smaller, like so. And that's how I created this layer effect. And maybe here as well. Um, let's use a really dark tone here for the sun to make it look a bit brighter like that and here for the middle part I'll use this yellowish color yeah like that see that gives more light on have more light on the image that way um, one other thing that I want to do is move this shape a bit more towards the left because I don't want to see this line that was here see that I don't want to have it like that and now we can merge this again I'll press shift alt command E and I'll turn it into a smart object and um, the first thing that I want to do is use the camera raw filter so go to filter camera raw filter if you don't have this uh, don't worry I just want to use it to sharpen a bit the image I'll go to 100% on the zoom because I want to see the amount of sharpening. So I'll increase the amount. And uh, the radius is okay. I'll increase the detail as well. Noise reduction is not necessary. I'll just reduce it slightly to just five. Let's see if some split toning uh, could, work, could look nice for this. For the highlights, some yellow. And for the shadow, some cyan bluish tone. Yeah, that looks okay. And on the effects, I want to add some post crop vignetting as well. Midpoint right there. And increase the feather a bit. I don't know if you can see it. I may I added too much postcard vignetting. You can do this manually. I'll show you how to do that manually as well. Actually, I'm not gonna add any postcard vignetting. I want to show you how to add it uh, manually if you don't have uh, the camera raw filter. Another thing that I want to do is it takes a while because I'm also recording the video. Um, actually, what I'll do is merge everything here so that it works a bit faster my computer okay and um, the next thing that I will add is a hue saturation and here I'll make some uh, I'll increase the master saturation a bit and also I'll go inside the colors here maybe the greens first that's not helping too much I want to increase I want to increase the saturation of some of the colors more than on some others that's why i'm going inside each of this color so for example for the greens you can see here i saturated them a bit more than the rest of the colors the blues as well let's see how or the cyans and maybe make them a bit brighter and yellows i don't think i will touch them too much you can also do this with a color, selective color as well. Okay, see the before and after. We made the image a bit more saturated selectively. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let's move on and add maybe a gradient map with, uh, let's reset our gradients. Reset gradients, okay, and change the display mode to large thumbnail no small thumbnail and i'll use this one and here let's try blend modes um the hue blend mode will well it's not looking nice of course it's too strong but it creates a really weird tone let's use color that's yeah, too strong 
that's way too strong. Let's say soft light, that's a bit better at just 5% or 10. Yeah, it looks nice. You also can you can also get great tones if you use the color lookup. Uh, with this, you can get some really cool effects. Combined with uh, blend modes, you can get some nice results. I'm not gonna use it. And uh, the next thing that I will add is yet another hue saturation. This time, what I want to do is the background is a bit too yellow. So what I want to do is make it a bit less yellow. So I'll use this hand to sample the color right here and you can see the selection was created down here. I'll drag the saturation slider towards the left until I get a color that I like. Minus 45 is okay. And now I'll use this layer mask and uh, I'll use the brush tool to paint with black over my model here to make sure that it recovers the color, okay? See that before and after. If you want to add some, um, well, here the face is a bit too yellow as well, so probably I'll paint with white to reduce the saturation on the face as well. So on the same layer mask, you can see how it looks. The face is affected by the adjustment layer, but the rest of the body, no. So if you want to create that um, vignette effect that I told you, what you can do is create a new layer Let's fill the entire layer with black. Now create this elliptical marquee tool. Well, create this marquee selection, this this uh, kind of selection here with the elliptical marquee tool. Fill, and, now, and now create the layer mask. You can see it's inverted, so I'll press Control Command I to invert it. And once we get something like this, we can soften this on the layer mask uh, itself. If you double click, you can open this panel and you can increase the feather and create the effect that you want, something like that. And now change the blend mode to, let's say, soft light. And probably decrease the opacity to like 65%. And boom, you have your vignetting effect. That's pretty much it. I also added some text. I don't even remember the... I don't even remember the font that I used. Let me go back and see what font I used. Actually, I'll drag the text itself. Dream big. I'll drag both of them to my canvas here. The font that I used is for the dream word. I used the titlium thing. <laughs> it's a really weird font. I'll give you the, uh, the font and the link where you can download it. <clears throat> and the way I added the color to it is I used the same. I used the same stock images that I used for the artwork. So just drag your images here and clip them to your word and there you have a nice colored word and for the big I think I used uh, this one drag it on top of it and clip it and of course make it smaller and there you have it And that's how I created this um, sort of um, portrait effect. I made it a bit quick, uh, but you can see the result here. I spent a bit more time on the details, but I got a pretty nice result here. Maybe we could add a levels adjustment or a curves adjustment uh, to make it a bit brighter and a bit more contrasty. But overall, I think it looks I think it looks pretty nice. So that's how I created this um, artwork. I hope you like it. And I would really like to see what you get um, with your own images. If you use Instagram, use the hashtag PSDbox when you upload your images or, or try to send uh, your images uh, via Facebook on our Facebook page. And that way I can see what you get. So I hope you liked this tutorial. I'm Andre, and we'll see you on the next tutorial.